It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is the Locked On Auburn Podcast, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast, presented by Fetch Me Home Delivery. Use promo code FetchMe20 for your first delivery free. I said this on uh, one of the shows towards the end of last month. Went up to Ohio, Grubhub was big in Columbus, and I told you guys, I'm like, it's, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. And Fetch Me is the only food delivery service that routinely trains its employees to follow and enhance our leading delivery guidelines and protocols. And of course, that allows Fetch Me to guarantee quality to their customers given that their fetchers are employees and the rest of the industry use independent contractors for delivery. I mean, they're not, they're not halfway doing any of this. They're, uh, they're all in. They take care of their people. And you can tell. You can absolutely tell, and a lot of people that that uh, that drive for Uber Eats or Grubhub. I know those aren't super big around our area, but they're big in you know other markets wherever you're listening. But a lot of people drive for different places, you know, whether it's DoorDash or Grubhub. But Fetch Me uses Fetch Me employees, like they said, not independent contractors. And you can tell, you can absolutely tell. I'm Zach Blackerby, joined. In studio this morning by Michael Pappas of ESPN 106.7. Painter Sharples will be joining us in just a moment. Michael, how are you, sir? I'm great, Zach. How are you? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. I'm acting like the NFL doesn't exist, so I'm doing okay. Mm-hmm. I'm doing mm-hmm. okay. Uh, Can we talk about how the MVP of that game was the punter Brett Kern? How about we talk about Auburn basketball's win over Mississippi okay. State? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. It's locked on Auburn. Of course. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'm not over it. I'll talk about it when I'm over it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Jarrett Stidham. Oh, my gosh. All right, yeah, so Auburn beats Mississippi State 80-68. to Storyline of this, I think, is terrible first-half shooting. You make up for it in the second half. They were shooting 30% at halftime. They were somehow winning, but Mississippi State was shooting 25% at the half. And, you know, it's just amazing to me the defense that Auburn is being able to play right now. I mean, it's... I think it's second to none in the SEC, and you look at it and you know the efficiency and all that. They're like in the mid twenties according to Ken Palm, defensive efficiency. But they've they've played solid teams. They've played good offensive uh, teams so far this year. So I expect that number to get better for Auburn as the year goes on. I think that is. Uh, I think that's the main storyline. Was as bad as they were on offense, they were still so good on defense that they were able to. Yeah. Be winning at halftime and then, you know, win by double digits in the end. Uh, I don't think that this is a game that last year's team is able to win. I don't think last year's team is able to win a game that they only make two or three three pointers, whatever the final number was. And this year's team was was able to get a double digit win in a game when they shot like one percent from the three point line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were shooting seventeen percent from the field. Six minutes left to go in the first half. And they were only down by six. Yeah, they went like 10 minutes in the first half without making a field goal or something. It yeah, was... they stayed at nine points for like half the half. I mean, it was crazy. One would say a quarter of the game. Uh, and then in a, f- a few minutes later, they were only down two, and they were shooting 21%. And at that time, they had not made a three-point shot yet. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it was all about defense, and it wore them down. It wore down Mississippi State. Now, Auburn had a 51-point second half, and... Last year's team, when they went on their run, I mean, you just, if they had a 50 point half, like you're probably going to win. That's definitely going to be the case with this Auburn team, the way they play defense. And so, looking at it, it's great that Auburn had a 51 point half. Interestingly enough, as abysmal as Mississippi State was from the field, I mean, they shot 33.8% from the field, Mississippi State did. They still scored like 41 points in the second half. I mean, that's a pretty good. Yeah, they scored 44 points in the in the second half. Like that's that's pretty good. So like Auburn's defense did back off a little bit as the game went on, but the game moved faster. They were scoring more. And that's just kind of how the flow went. But um, Mississippi State's not a good basketball team. I don't want to take anything really? away from what Auburn did. I just don't think Mississippi State's very good. Second biggest team in the country. I read that metric this year. Uh, uh, yeah, it's going into this year. I, I read that metric this morning when I was reading about and looking, seeing if I missed anything. I missed that stat going into the game, 
and I missed a stat that over the last 17 times, going into Saturday, this doesn't count Saturday's game, but going into Saturday's game, Auburn had, in the last 17 trips that it had taken to Starkville, do you know how many times it had won? Two. Two. It's crazy. So now it's three of 18. It's yeah. still not very good. But that, like that, I mean, that, that says something there. I full-on thought Auburn was going to lose this game. How come? Uh, I thought, A, A, I thought it would be the most Auburn thing ever to finish non-conference play undefeated and then lose in the first conference game. Yeah. Um, B, it's a road game, first SEC road game with, uh, I mean, not a new crop of players, but, uh, you know, all the new starters that we've been talking about for this whole season. And then the – the, the two out of 17 wins in the hump. And, and Ben Howland is an incredible coach. I mean, he made back-to-back Final Fours when he was at UCLA. Just, I felt like the stars kind of aligned for this to be Auburn's first loss. It wasn't, obviously. I, I think this Mississippi State team is going to end up in the tournament, so I think this is going to end up being um, a, wow. a, a pretty decent win for Auburn. Where do you think they finish in the SEC? You think they're a top-five SEC team? No, but I think the SEC could easily get eight teams in the tournament this year. No way. Yeah. There's no way. Okay. Eight? Yeah, just wait. Okay. They did last year, didn't they? Even if they did, I I don't think the SEC looks that good so far this year. I agree, but a lot of these teams haven't gotten – I mean, most teams haven't gotten into conference play yet. And Who are the eight? A lot of SEC teams are going to get Kentucky, by. Kentucky, Arkansas, Florida. All right, keep going for me. You said Mississippi both, State. Both Mississippi teams. Okay, Old Miss. That's we're at six. Um, you got Georgia getting in there? Yeah, Georgia will probably get in because Georgia will have the best player on the floor for the majority of their games this season. All right, who's your last one? Uh, I'll give it to Buzz Williams at Texas A&M. I think he's an incredible coach. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm way off here, but or Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's not a bad team either. I think they're bad. Okay. I think we'll see it on Wednesday Okay. when Auburn plays them. I think they're bad. Okay. Once again, maybe I'm off. Maybe I'm off here. We'll see. A lot of time left. But. Yeah, and it's so early. Nothing that's happened so far really matters, but I don't know. Maybe one of us is going to be off, yeah, right? You're right. And yeah. we can just poke the other one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. I want to give a shout-out to uh, Javon McCormick. Mm-hmm. Auburn started, uh, I think, 0 for 11 from 3. And then he made the first two to start the second half. And then a big st- – he ended up with, what, 28 points, 9 of 17 for 28. So awesome, awesome outing for Javon. That was – I, that may have been his best game that I've ever seen him play. I, I really liked what Javon McCormick did, and I've been really hard on him throughout the season. So I, I'm excited to see him step up the way that he did. D'Angelo Purifoy, a big storyline immediately following this game, and Painter and I talked about this on After the Game when we broadcast live from Mauricia on ESPN 106.7, was uh, he scored eight points in that minute and 19 second span. Mm-hmm. He got super hot, and that's kind of what sparked Auburn to go on that run to pull away to, to ultimately make this kind of a boring last few minutes of the ball game. I didn't like how he looked outside of that. Four of ten from the field. Three of seven from three, you take that, ended up with 11 points. I mean, overall, I think he was pretty inefficient. I know there's going to be a lot of talk about what he did in that eight, that minute and a, less than a minute and a half, but I think that's worth noting. That is all. Uh, Zach, we've spent a lot of time talking on this podcast about who the guy is going to be this season. When you need a basket, who's going to be the guy? Uh, at first, I thought it was going to be. Um, Isaac Okoro, because I, I even texted you this during the game. They really needed a basket. They went to Okoro. He got, or Okoro, as they kept saying on the broadcast. That made a lot of people mad. Painter Sharpless of ESPN 167 now joining us. Your team made it as far in the playoffs as my team made it. That's true. Which is not where you want to be. It's true. Anytime you're of, dealing with the Bills or doing, things have not gone according to I plan. love that Bills toboggan you got going on. That's yeah, sharp. I really wanted to make a statement while we were talking Auburn hoops. <laughs> that's fine. Hey, that's okay. That, that's how our post-game show was from a reach on ESPN 167. I had a good time with you. I it thought, was fun. I thought I was real funny all day. So that was, that was the best part. <laughs> well, that's all that matters as long as you thought you were yeah, funny, right? So sorry to interrupt you, Michael. No, that's fine. But yeah, Isaac Okoru, uh, Painter and I, we, we couldn't hear the game where we were watching it, but we got we got a few tweets. We were listening to the jazz flute. Yes. Mm. Sweet, sweet jazz flute. Mm. Michael, you can play a jazz flute, can't you? No. Heck no? Yeah. Yes, you can. I can listen to one. We though. had dual screens going, though, to reach you one. 
Bills to Auburn Hoops, and the Auburn Hoops is a lot better. That's true. Well, not, for, not for most of the game. For most of the game, the Bills game was probably better. You're right. The first half, objectively, you're right. I mean, because they started in a similar time frame. And, uh, my God, the Auburn basketball team was terrible at shooting threes. Jeez. This team's not going to be good at shooting threes. And you you, you told me, you called me out on our broadcast on after the game. I did? Yeah. You said that, uh, that you, you think this team is going to get better at shooting threes throughout the year. I think they will get better. I don't know if it's going to be enough to make it. Like, I don't know how much they're going to go into games relying on. I think that's got to be one of the big storylines is that if their offense can count on some three-point shooting this year, I don't know of any big weaknesses they have. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. On the broadcast, they were also talking about how it took them, you know, however long to find the hot hand, and then they found it in Danchel Purifoy, and he made three three pointers or whatever. But have y'all talked about the Javon thing that happened around the same time too? Like Javon, I think he had a couple of threes in that same time, and it sort of. I mean, Javon was the motor of the offense. Yeah, twenty seven. I think twenty eight. Twenty eight. Yeah. They uh, don't take that point from him. No, I, he, I don't want he to. He was awesome. He was everywhere. He was hustling. He was bustling. I, I thought Zach, you're not a fan of Javon, right? Not whoa, whoa. Now I have been really hard on whoa. him. Whoa, that's fair to say. You're not a fan might might be overly critical. But what is it about his game that because he's he's a guy I do he, like. He is rather inefficient. Is and, and he wasn't super efficient, but he was he scored. I mean, he took seventeen shots and he scored twenty eight points. I mean, you, you take that. But a lot of the times, over fifty percent from the field. Yeah, he'll score fourteen points and he'll shoot it twelve times. Mm-hmm. And it's like you you, you got to get better than that. So that's my biggest critique. If he does what he did Saturday every week, that Auburn's going to be really good with him. Yeah. So, although I I I wouldn't love if. Uh, if Auburn had a guy who was scoring 28 points every night. You would love it? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, one of the staples of, of Bruce Pearl and his You don't know who's going to go off? It, not that, but it's also like the, ba- the balance from top to bottom on the, of the guys who play. I mean, some guys will get 4-6, <clears> to six, some guys will get 12-14, to 14, and then last year it was really Jared and Bryce who kind of carried the offensive load. LSU. And so LSU did what many of us thought that they would do, and that was completely dismantle Oklahoma. Clemson. The Tigers lock in another trip to the national championship game. This time they're heading to the Big Easy. Two teams, one trophy, one network. Locked on Clemson podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Locked on LSU, your team every day. The college football national champion will be crowned, and the Locked on Podcast Network will have you covered every day. Tigers went three and out on their second possession of the ball game. Other than that, they scored every time they had the ball in the first half. It was a stunning display of efficiency and dominance. In my opinion, that was the most well-prepared, solid defensive approach that Clemson's offense has seen to date. Follow or subscribe to your favorite team on the app you're listening to right now and get locked on. All right, we'll talk some more basketball throughout the week. I want to talk a little uh, a little football action. So uh, I, I saw this originally on Auburn Undercover. So Auburn, um, Auburn's four-star safety, the signee, who's now an early enrollee as of uh, this past weekend, Chris Thompson Jr. He, he's from Texas. He is from Texas. <laughs> That's important that you point that out. But he, uh, he got some love on Twitter from Deion Sanders, and I think that's pretty cool. Deion Sanders. Prime time, baby. He's from Texas. Ah, uh, Is uh, he really? I don't know if he's. A, I don't think he's originally from there, but he lives there now. Yeah, his his sons go to well, that's high school misleading. there. He played it's not, for it's not the Cowboys. The, it's not the same thing. Okay, I'm sorry. With he, that logic, that you're lives, from Alabama, he lives in Texas. I was wondering why you're he pointing at Texas. me. I was like, what my, what ad lib am I supposed to be doing? He yeah, I'm like, Texas. Dion didn't play for the Bills. Like, he, what are you what are you doing? He lives and coaches high school football in Texas. How much Bill swag do you his have? Sons now? in Texas enough. A well, pretty he, significant increase from what I had two years ago. Dude, he went to Philly. Obviously, he came back. Or where'd you? Pittsburgh? I don't even we know. did go to Philly, <laughs> okay. which is like 90 minutes from where the significant other is from. But yeah, we didn't get Eagles gear. That would, that would be to the go to. Obviously, he came back with a bunch of Bills gear. We wore Bills jerseys and um, and a, a Pats hoodie to the uh, to after the game, and we got called out for it in the company meeting this morning. Yeah, you did. 
It's like, we're going to get y'all some Auburn Network shirts so y'all can start wearing those to remotes. And I'm like, yeah, I know that's directed towards. That was at us? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was someone else wearing flip-flops. I didn't think that that was a problem. <laughs> He specifically said no more NFL teams. I blocked that. No, I didn't hear that part at all. I heard the part I wanted to hear, which was the no flip-flops part. And I'm thinking about us going live on the ESPN 106.7 Twitter. I'm like, oh, that's what that was. But anyway, I think it's cool that um, I think it's cool that Thompson got... So I have to wear a tux to work now. That's why I make the big bucks is what I'm hearing. He's saying he was ordering swag for us, so we'll we'll see. We'll see. I blacked out during that meeting. It's okay. (laughs) All right. Cool. I don't think y'all thought that was as cool as I did. The Texas, the the tweet from Texas guy Dion, noted Texas guy Dion Sanders. Yeah, yeah. I I mean I like, like I like a tweet awesome. from Dion. Yeah. Okay. We, Whoa. Y'all we give worst. you what you want, and now you're upset about it. It wasn't genuine. None of that was genuine. I said at all. I don't want salmon. <laughs> Dion right. coaches at a high school. I don't particularly like. Wouldn't it be great to just. Make all that money and be like, what's the thing I want to do now? You know, and it's like, I'll coach at a lower level. Whoa. Making Why'd you not s- a lot of money oh. because I like being around kids and coaching football. Like that's not to say you couldn't do that as a profession. You could. All right. One last thing I want to talk about, guys. And I, yeah, we were, we were all part of the podcast last week where we talked. Uh, we answered a listener question about the receivers, I think, and. I talked about Cody Burns and how much I, I, I like what Cody Burns has done. You got a lot of feedback for that. Yeah. Am I off? Because most people were like, yeah, Cody Burns stinks on, on, on Twitter. And I'm just like, what in the world? I'm not here to say whether you're off or on on this take. What I am curious about is how the Auburn fans feel about this guy. And I think it must be for a couple of reasons. One, former player. And then two, like... He's done a good job at bringing in talented guys. That you cannot argue against. His so recruiting, it, you cannot argue against. And so I think that people are kind of split about like, all right, well, how like what's his role and, and how valuable is he? Because is he a recruiter and a coach? Is he just a recruiter? Yeah. Randall tweets at us and said, uh, not much productive movement. Great recruiting, not much development. Um, Lamont said he's been a great recruiter. He's had good receivers, but I don't think a lot of them have reached their potential while at Auburn. Yet with drops here and there and no receiver you game plan for. Um, Great recruiter. Needs a good analyst to help coach receivers. Do you think that people don't game plan for Seth? Like, is is Seth, is it enough of a one-trick pony with the Auburn offense that people just know, all right, well, he's going to be tough to to deal with, but but we don't have to scheme or game plan against Seth? I think you got to game plan more against Schwartz and Seth. Yeah. Painter, can you hear right now in the headphones? Painter's got a toboggan on and it's like folded up, and then he's got the headphones on over the fold. And I'm just, I'm sorry. When when I wear a toboggan, I like have it sitting above, like higher up on my head, and there's just poofiness on the top. You've got like you've covered up your whole face. So I do like that the Brady, like I'm gonna steal the McAllister family look that uh-huh. he had going on in his press conference. But uh, for the headphones' sake, you kind of have to get it down on the head. All right, Sky said uh, about Cody. I'd say he gets a passing grade, but he's not on the honor roll by any stretch of the imagination. Ooh. During the entire 2019 season he didn't have a receiver emerge as a legitimate number two option to Seth Williams not to mention there was no deep threat to stretch the defense so I mean most of these are kind of saying the same thing and and if you are a lot of people are saying below average so a a lot of people not super high on Cody Burns and so my question to you guys is how off am I because I'm extremely high on what he's done I think I don't know how to answer the question just because the offense is so tough but go ahead Michael I think you guys are saying the same thing. You are just putting more stock into what you're putting stock in than they are. Like, I, I think that you're putting a lot of stock into his success recruiting. Darius Slayton was probably the second best rookie wide receiver in the league last year. Yeah, and, and you're putting a lot of stock into stuff. Behind DK Metcalf? Ooh. I was going to say behind the, A.J. Brown. I was going to say the McLaurin guy. Totally not relevant, <laughs> but a couple of other people have pointed this out on social media. They had A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf, Metcalf and won five games. Please continue with the relevant conversation. That is terrible. And it's terrible. If you Just throw it up. Throw it up. That's, That's all Tannehill's do. doing. Throw First play against Alabama. I'll stop because this is the Auburn podcast, but that is malarkey. <laughs> I mean, come on. Figure it out. You're fired up today, and it's throw getting me fired up. Throw a deep vertical to D.K. Metcalf, and I feel good about that guy coming down with. Like, oh, oh. 
Remember when people thought uh, Jordan Tayama was good? <laughs> and it's like, no, it, 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 it's his receivers. It does help to have those guys. It does. Yep. So, yeah, I think you and the people are on the same page about what he does and doesn't do. I, I just genuinely think... don't know what we're looking at with Gus Malzahn's offense. Like, if you put Cody Burns in Nick Saban's crew or if you put him with Jimbo Fisher, he's going to, I think, keep recruiting well. Yeah. So, like, he'll fit in with the staff in that way. Does he fit in from a scheme standpoint? Like, what is he? does he make Alabama's receiving core better since it's already so good? Say he just comes in for a year. Mm-hmm. You've already got a talented group of players, so you only have to do a minimal amount of coaching. Do they still get better? No. I, I mean, <laughs> Jeez, all right. I mean the receivers that are on Auburn's team right now, I think they all got better. Seth Williams is better this past season than he was his first season. I think Schwartz, Schwartz maybe not, but I think the whole injury thing kind of makes that, all right, let's wait and see till next year. Well, Hastings and Eli Stove, they got hurt. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of other guys. Sal Canella got better. I know, I know you're not crazy about him, Michael, but I, 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 he, he got better uh, over the course of his few seasons at Auburn. I have no idea what you guys keep. like. People keep chirping me about Sal Canella. I you, you love keep... Sal Canella. I'm his the president of his fan club. I just said all that stuff before to give him motivation so he'd play better. It worked. Has, he, has he thanked you for so that credit, yet? Yeah, so credit me. Okay. Credit me. Shout Thank out you. to – that's what I want – I want Bo Nix's offense to look like what it looked like on that Sal Canella touchdown in the bowl game. Just Russell Wilson and around. If they just have a good enough run game, I'm convinced next year they don't need any pass blocking offensive linemen. They just need a bunch of mean dudes. If they can run the ball well, hear me out on this. He's just going to Russell Wilson around until someone like Sal Canella gets open, and then you throw it to him. It's that simple as that. Painter, where can people find you and hear you, bud? 11 to 1, the lunch break on ESPN 106.7. You can catch that at ESPNAU.com and the ESPN 1067 app. Justin Ferguson and me, Zach and Michael, make some appearances too. So check it out. If sure. you like this show, this yes. pod, yes. you will You'll like love it. it. You'll, the- will, you will love it. Yes. You'll love it. Michael? My name is Michael. You can follow me on Twitter. First name Coast. Michael, last name Pat. Greatness. Oh. 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 Couch follow me on Twitter at Couch Pat Tato. Fantastic. Follow me on Twitter at Z Black. We follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Auburn. This has been another edition of the Locked On Auburn Podcast. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.